What's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, jumping in on this March 30th, uh, Tuesday evening, 2021, 7.13 p.m. West Coast time here in California. Quite a bit of earthquake activity to talk about, including all the activity there in the Alia Permanent area. That's near Mauna Loa, showing quite a bit of significant earthquake activity over the last 24 hours with a pretty intense swarm going on there. Let's go ahead and check out the latest information there um, from the USGS folks there. On Mauna Loa Volcano there in the big island of Hawaii. Check out all this earthquake activity there near Mauna Loa Caldera, Caldera region. Um, that is the caldera here in the uh, red, uh, red lines here. Check out that earthquake swarm. Roughly about 100 earthquakes over the last 24 hours. This is all magnitudes reaching down to about four to five kilometers below surface on average. There's some uh, a couple shallower earthquakes there. Uh, but definitely a heightened sense of or a heightened um, uh, volcanic er activity right there. The biggest one so far, uh, let's see what we got here. They're, they're not large magnitudes. They're pretty much all microquakes there. Uh, below 2.5 threshold. I think we had a three-pointer. Let me see if we can find that there. I, th I could have swore we did. Um, let me go down here to 2.5 and above. There's been a couple above 2.5, but... Just because you're not big earthquakes there does not mean this is not uh, something to pay close attention to. 100 earthquakes in the swarm right next to the uh, biggest volcano there uh, on the big island. Uh, talking about uh, definitely something to watch here. USGS Volcanoes has not put out any type of um, news media statement on this yet. Uh, I'm sure they will because it is a significant swarm right next to the caldera, roughly about two miles away. And uh, I'm sure this will ultimately, uh, well, this we, we need to pay attention to this very closely. There's been activity all over the Big Island uh, just today. Up here to the north near, uh, it looks like a Monokia region. If that's the wrong pronunci pronunciation, please forgive me. And please correct me below in the comments. Uh, looks like Monokia region. Seen a couple earthquakes up there as well. A couple small microquakes. A little bit bigger earthquake here. No, I shouldn't say bigger. But in between all this microquake activity, a 3.3 quake striking out there uh, outside of all this swarming uh, 25 kilometers downstream below the surface, too. Also some uh, more further movement there near Mauna Loa. I mean, Mauna Loa covers an entire portion here of, of the big island. So this gives you a pretty good idea of uh, heightened volcanic activity right now just over the last 24 hours. 3.3 down there way down there below the uh, beautiful surface. Also some further movement here to the east of the Kilauea or the of the uh, caldera in, at Mauna Loa. A couple deeper earthquakes there, even though they're microquakes, we're still getting some movement being registered there. And of course your typical uh, swarming that's going on down here in the southeast area of the Big Island, but uh, definitely heightened earthquake or uh, heightened earthquake activity related to volcanic activity showing up there on the uh, Mauna Loa volcano region there uh i want to check out the latest information on the um mauna loa area I'll go ahead and refresh that just to make sure we got the latest information it still sits as of right now at a yellow advisory okay look how big that <laughs> that's pretty big uh last eruption on mauna loa just a couple quick facts here was back in march 24th we're coming up on that uh well actually we we're past that uh, March 24th to April 15th area. I guess um, we're still within that time frame, 1984. So it's been quite a few years of uh, quietness, so to speak, when it comes to uh, volcanic eruptions there uh, on the Big Island with the Mauna Loa volcano. Threat potential, of course, sits at very high. We covered a little bit more detail in this in one of my past videos of Mauna Loa. Not going to go into a whole bunch of activity. Uh, Mauna Loa is among Earth's most active volcanoes, having erupted 33 times since its first well-documented historical eruption back in 1843. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of information here when it comes to um, um, checking out the Mauna Loa activity. I want to show you guys real quick on the map here from the USGS Volcanoes page all the earthquake activity taking place there. Mauna Loa in the yellow triangle there, indicating the advisory stage. Quite a bit of earthquake activity just recently, folks. Most of this is recent activity. Uh, you can see the orange-red indicating within the last two days, but most of this within the last 24 hours. 
Uh, so definitely some uh, changes going on there in the uh, in the Mauna Loa area. Uh, what do we got for volcano updates right now? A swarm of earthquakes began began uh, on March 29th, 2021. Uh, is occurring beneath the northwest flank of Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa is not erupting, and other monitoring data streams currently show no signs of increased activity with, within the past day. So I don't know if they're talking about the activity that's occurring today or not. Uh, 2.30 a.m. on uh, March 29th would not be today, so I don't believe they have included today's activity in this. And today's activity is the heightened uh, earthquake activity that I just showed you there. Uh, just going over this r real quick here, beginning at 2.30 uh, on the 29th, has recorded over 130 earthquakes beneath the northwest side of Mauna Loa Summit, about 42 kilometers west-northwest of the volcano. Uh, most of the, these earthquakes are occurring in a cluster about uh, one mile wide and six to eight kilometers below the surface. So I don't believe, I honestly don't believe, today's the 30th, right? They're not back in the 29th yet. Uh, I believe, if anything, that's old data very old uh, not very old but uh definitely over the 24-hour period there i believe or close to it because um, most of this activity that we've seen right there uh is um just today just today's activity there 100 earthquakes or so in the mono Loa area um so i'll be looking for another uh another update from these folks here no doubt uh, HVO continues to closely monitor geologic changes, seismic, seism seismicity, deformation, and gas emissions at Mauna Loa and Kilauea volcanoes. HVO will issue additional messages and alert levels as warranted by changing activity. So there's definitely a lot of movement going on, folks, along this Pacific plate. Of course, a hot spot of activity. Uh, hot spot, right? Hawaii is a hot spot when it comes to volcano activity there uh, over the Pacific plate. I'm not going to go into... Uh, a long, his, long history class or science class, I should say, about ho how Hawaii is formed, but it's uh, it's a hot spot. It sits upon a hot spot. It is a hot spot of the Pacific Plate there. And of course, as the Pacific Plate moves, the volcano um, or the volcanoes, the volcano chain here changes, right, as the Pacific Plate moves. And we've seen quite a bit of movement along the Pacific Plate here, mostly on the eastern side check out all this activity occurring in the north american continent here in the states all the way from uh, montana uh, stretching down here into utah in the southern california area uh, most of this activity uh, followed this 4.7 that struck off the coast of northern california this morning right uh, close to the cascadia subduction zone not on it but pretty darn close struck at about 9.7 kilometers below the surface while we're talking about this 4.7, I kind of want to give you um, some facts on why this happened. Okay, take a look at this uh, tremor map. Okay, this is from today. I want to go back to yesterday's activity real quick and show you guys um, the buildup of tremor that's been occurring in Northern California in the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. We're looking at uh, 411 epicenters of tremor along the Cascadia subduction zone. So with all this slippage going on, what do you think's going on? What do you think's going on backstream, back upstream, back towards the surface here? Of course, the locked area may be locked. You know, it's 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 obviously it's adding further pressure uh, in this region. The more slippage that we have, but it's not ready to give yet. The Cascadia is not ready to pop and unzip a uh, major catastrophe in the Pacific Northwest. So ultimately, that strain is locked in here. The strain will back build up here towards the, let me show you guys, the region up here where we've seen this 4.7 take place. And of course, there was another one prior to that. Um, let's see, if, well, maybe it's not going to show it. Seven point, there it is. There was a little bit smaller one um, prior to that 4.7 there. Uh, when was it? On the 28th, a couple days ago in that region, 4.1. So the 4.7 getting a little bit closer to the Cascadia Mega Thrust Zone, but just know that the reason why we're seeing this and i expect potentially some further stress on the cascadia with all of this trimmer uh, that's going on there in this region of northern california uh, there was a little bit of activ activity up to the north uh, in the seattle area and there has been uh, let's go there's just a lot to cover here hold on one second folks let's go to the today's and you can see the continued activity in northern cal 
central Oregon and into Washington area. There has been an increase in earthquake activity right there in the Seattle area as well. Let's go ahead and check that out real quick with the all magnitudes here over the last day. Check out this activity up here, folks. This is some deep movement going on near Seattle. 25, 42, 28 kilometers below the surface. All these quakes are. This is an obvious sign, right, of some increased high pressure uh, seismic activity at the surface. Right, right up there. 4.7 down here in Northern Cal. And the all the activity up here near Seattle. Uh, there's definitely a tremendous amount of pressure being applied on, on the locked section of Cascadia subduction zone right now. Um, it's very possible we could see a little bit further uh, movement along the surface, a little bit larger than the 4.7 up here. Uh, very possible. Sometimes we do get uh, deep earthquakes that occur inland, away from the Cascadia subduction zone, kind of like we're seeing right now. Uh, these are relatively small quakes, but the, de the, uh, the depth is very significant here. We have seen some deeper movement. Uh, throughout the years and of larger magnitudes, so I'm not counting that out uh, when it comes to potentially seeing larger magnitudes in this region and also into Northern California. Of course, uh, if if uh, the Cascadia goes, then you know it's pretty much that's it. There's a lot of uh, a lot of stress being built up in that region since 1700, and it could just be a partial rupture or it could be a, a full rupture. A partial 8.0 earthquake on here would be uh, significant and bad. Uh, but it wouldn't be as bad as a 9.0 full rupture of the Cascadia subduction zone. It's something to watch very closely, especially with the heightened earthquake activity that we've seen since this morning. Uh, it all started with that 4.7, and then we got a couple of earthquakes there near uh, the uh, Ridgecrest Lone Pine area north of there. Near uh, Where'd that go? What happened to Lone Pine earthquake? It looks like they may have uh, moved it uh, somewhere, or at least took it off the map. Uh, but needless to say, earthquake activity did pick up here. And also we've seen a ramp up of earthquake activity in Nevada with a four-pointer, unless they got rid of it. It was a 4.2, 4.3, I believe, that was in the Nevada area. 4.4, there we go. That followed this 4.4 struck shortly thereafter, the 4.7 off the coast of Northern California. Uh, and we've just been seeing activity bounce back and forth throughout the Intermountain West and the West Coast region and into Seattle all day, while the east, while the western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire remains locked and quiet. Okay, so we're still kind of focused on Hawaii and the West Coast region for further movement, uh, and not to mention some activity over here. We'll get into that in just a second. But uh, uh, there has, there's really no swarming to report down here in Southern California. It's just these odd quakes that are striking uh, and the magnitudes that are kind of given off a, uh, a relatively, uh, well, it's, it's facts that high pressure is being built up out here along the West Coast even further than the, what we've seen here in the past. Some movement along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. These are some microquakes, 2.3, along the creeping section. But also here to the west, uh, we're seeing some further movement and deep earthquake activity near Soledad. Um, and also over here to the west, further off towards the coast, some further deep movement here, indicating uh, some buildup. Like I said, it's all along the west coast for the moment. The only part we haven't really seen hit with some new movement and above average earthquake activity is south of the Garlock fault system. And that's a sheer fault system here. It's quiet. And the activity south of there, this is, if you get rid of the activity to the north, this is very, very quiet when it comes to your daily earthquake activity on any given day for Southern California. Um, so it's very possible, very possible that we're looking at um, some potential release down here south of the Garlock fault system uh, which is, like I said, the sheer fault that stretches along here, kind of uh, east to west, west to east, uh, opposite of what you normally see in California with the north to south. But either way, there's a lot of fault systems down there, and they uh, just like a spider web of, of, uh, of a mess. I would not want to live down there. It's kind of crazy when it comes to potential damage of earthquakes. So pay attention, folks, south of the Garlock Fault Zone. Uh, we can follow this trail of activity 
all the way up in Idaho, right? Or uh, Utah, I should say. Parts of Idaho, yes, they're getting it, but you can follow this trail all the way to Yellowstone. What's going on at Yellowstone, folks? Let's check that out real quick. There's a swarm going on. Uh, let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, looks like it may have died down a little bit. You can see this uh, activity right there, all those spikes indicating some very small microquakes, but activity nonetheless. Um, now, these are not showing up on other stations, but I have been watching them pretty closely on the uh, live seismograph station of uh, Lake Yellowstone. And I'm not for sure where Lake Yellowstone is. I'm trying to get that to key up here a little bit. But uh, for some reason, I can't get it to pop up. Lake Butte. I, it's hidden down there. It's hidden behind one of these somewhere. But either way, you can kind of see it on a borehole as well. Right there, those are all earthquakes and uh, microquakes, but quite the intense swarm going on there. For some reason, data got lost on that, uh, but con con continued swarming uh, up until this hour right here. So uh, definitely um, watching this activity all the way up through Montana. Um, it kind of shows you where, where some major pressure is being applied here, folks. Just a lot of movement here. Uh, just be on guard with all the... Uh, with all the trimmer being reported, let's get a count on the trimmer trimmer map right here. 636 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia uh, with surface rupture, surface earthquaking at uh, northwest of Seattle. Some deep movement there and also some surface uh, quaking there off the coast of Northern California with that 4.7. Um, it's very possible we could see, like I mentioned, some more further surface quaking uh, just due to the fact that we're not seeing any any type of adjustment over here to the west. I mean, yes, we got little earthquake uh, off the coast of uh, Japan there, but we haven't seen any further movement over here uh, along this entire section that would relieve uh, a little bit of pressure out here along the North American and Pacific plate area. Uh, it's just not, it, I haven't seen it. So it's still, still kind of be on guard out here, folks. Covering the region over here near the uh, Dominican Republic area, we're looking at a little bit of activity on the up ramp here. Of course, we did see some movement uh, north of Puerto Rico area near the Puerto Rico Trench. Some abnormal earthquake activity around the uh, uh, St. John's area over the past week or so. So heightened uh, pressure along this region as well. Dominican Republic showing a 4.1 at 7 kilometers below surface. Uh, Puerto Rico, not a whole lot of activity. Kind of quiet for the moment, but... Uh, Still be on guard there, folks. Ultimately, you got to look at the Earth as a, uh, and I've said this many times, it's like a giant eggshell. Uh, all these little fractures um, will affect other fault systems far away. Like for the most part, uh, when we see quiet activity over here to the west, along the North American Pacific Plate here, on the Eastern Pacific Plate, uh, we're looking at increase in activity. It always, it always happens. I haven't seen a time when it doesn't really happen, when, when it doesn't happen. Uh, but also towards back over here towards the Caribbean plate too, we look at increase in activity. Uh, the only other really area that hasn't seen a whole lot of movement is down here in the South America area as well. Um, there's a little uh, deep earthquake there. And uh, this one right here, this one's about 10 kilometers, almost a six pointer, 5.8 in the southern east pacific rise there on that uh this little region inland here in the south america area that was that uh, deeper earthquake up here to the north uh, near columbia we've seen some further deep movement so uh looking at uh deep movement all over i think i mentioned this here a couple nights ago just be on guard folks when it gets quiet over here this kind of this kind of worries me of course if you're over here in this region new zealand up through Japan area, of course, you know, it's it's building, uh, but it's not enough stress to release, or I should say there's just not enough, uh, um, Mother Nature hasn't decided to release any pressure, I guess I should say. Um, it's hard to say how much pressure is being built up over here, but I'm sure there's uh, quite a bit of strain at the moment. Uh, and also uh, over here along the eastern part, uh, that's where we're seeing all the earthquake activity today. So. Just be on guard, folks. Uh, Alaska seen a little bit of movement. Uh, Asia region is uh, seeing some. Uh, looks like a 5.2 up there in Mongolia area. Uh, let's see what do we got through the Middle East. Pretty quiet. Some movement around Rome. 4.7 in Italy, and also 4.2 up there uh, near Austria. 
Looks like quite a few folks reported filling that 4.2 at a 7.3 kilometer depth. Uh, Atlantic Ocean showing a little bit of activity near the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, just a 4.8. Be on guard, folks, in Hawaii, West Coast region. Uh, definitely be uh, paying, paying attention there. The Mauna Loa activity, folks, you can get all this information on the USGS.gov website at Volcanoes. This pretty much shows you all the um, uh, volcano monitoring and whatnot that takes place there. It's uh, something to work, uh, something to watch, especially when it comes to uh, posting updates and whatnot. This, like I said, this one we read just a short time ago uh, is some older activity. They have not included all of the uh, uh, movement that took place today. Uh, solar weather. Someone asked me, well, what's going on with the solar department? Is this relate? Is all this earthquake related to uh, earthquake activity related to solar weather? Not no. Right now, we're looking at some quiet activity. Zero on the K. Well, it's pretty low on the KP index's values right there. Really low. Solar weather storm prediction there showing uh, low quiet activity. No solar flares to report. We're looking at 1% less. 1% chance, folks. That's quiet. Extremely quiet. Um, coronal holes facing us. Just a little bitty one. Uh, there on the uh, center side of the sun facing us. No sunspots that I can see. A little bit of uh, um, magnetic mixing right there. But those are facing away from us. Other than that, the sun is quiet. Uh, we need this thing to come alive. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. Um, that's about it. That is about it for tonight. Um, you know, I don't know if this video is going to get sent out to a whole bunch of subscribers or not because of the, uh, uh, the amount of videos I put out this morning, but we'll see. There's the Yellowstone swarm occurring right there. You guys see that right there? Lake Yellowstone with spikes are indicating the continued earthquake swarm at Yellowstone. A little bit of activity ramping up there as soon as I speak about it. They're in Southern California. Let's see what they got going on down there. Let's go back to that map here real quick. i just seen a, seen a uh, earthquake down there around the Southern California area. I don't think they've updated it yet. Like I say, it takes a couple minutes to go from the, uh, the seismograph stations to the USGS map. That's a little earthquake right there near Barrett, California, east of San Diego. Doesn't look like nothing big, but it does show. Uh, uh, it's it's rel it's been relatively quiet all day, so it does show kind of a p potentially a uh, increase in earthquake activity down there as well. Um, so anyway, folks, just be on guard, stay safe. You know, it's um, it's best to be prepared out there, West Coast, uh, on target for right now. We'll be back if uh, something happens, or if there's a little bit further update or a further uptick in earthquake activity. But for now. Have a good night. Uh, it's Tuesday night. Hope everyone's having a great night out there. We're going to kick back and enjoy a beautiful evening here in California. It's supposed to be 83 degrees tomorrow, 86 on Thursday. Oh my gosh, 80. No, actually, I think I've seen 88. 88 degrees for uh, for first of, an ap first, first of April. What the heck? Unbelievable. I'm not, I'm not ready for it. All right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.